Do you get injured a lot? Maybe you have ongoing joint aches or injuries that aren't healing. Maybe you even have some issues with your gums. My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at scurvy causes and treatment and how some of these symptoms may be related to what's known as subclinical scurvy. We're going to look at some genetics, some research studies, and put it all together to help you see if this might be a problem going on with you. So again, my name is Dr. Taranella, and if you're new to this channel, I just want you to know that I'm making these videos to help you go beyond the basics of your health, whether it's a confusing lab test, nutritional issue, or hormone imbalance. I make these videos to help you get a better understanding of what's happening with your body. So if you like this kind of information, click on the like button, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this one. Now for a quick disclaimer, the information contained in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as treatment for any medical condition or a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical professional. It should be used as an educational guide to deepen your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, let's look at scurvy causes and treatment. So in this video, we want to look at scurvy causes and treatment. How likely is it to manifest in a general population and why it might be present in that population when it is there? Scurvy is a disease caused by severe vitamin C deficiency and is characterized by symptoms such as bleeding gums, joint pain and aches, poor wound healing, all of which are related to collagen breakdown and impaired collagen synthesis. Now, these are all fairly common symptoms that a lot of us are going to have as we get older. And of course, that doesn't necessarily mean that you for sure have scurvy or subclinical scurvy. Most of the time when we think of scurvy, we think about it in the extreme versions, but you don't have to actually have extreme major scurvy to have a vitamin C deficiency that may be affecting your gums or tissue repair in general. What I'm suggesting here is that subclinical scurvy may be more common than we might think. Actual scurvy and vitamin C deficiency is a relatively rare thing in the United States, but it can occur in certain populations. And as we'll see, one does not have to have frank scurvy or vitamin C deficiency in order to have problems from not enough vitamin C. According to data from National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, also known as NHANES, conducted between 2003 and 2004, about 7% of adults over the age of 20 had vitamin C deficiency as defined by blood plasma concentration below 11.4 micromoles per liter. So a blood plasma concentration is simply just a blood test where you measure the amount of vitamin C in the sample. In the sample that they looked at, the prevalence of vitamin C deficiency was much higher in those that were smokers and individuals of lower income and education levels. These are also most likely the people that are eating more poorly and not taking vitamin C supplements. Of course, the more inflammation going on in the body from smoking or poor diet habits or any lifestyle factor that's going to contribute to inflammation is going to deplete your vitamin Cs a lot quicker as well. Another study looked at the effects of subclinical vitamin C deficiency on endothelial dysfunction or endothelial function. Endothelium is the inner part of your arteries, and there's a whole dynamic interplay of things going on there that allows the arteries to expand when there's more oxygen needed in local tissues outside of that artery. And when your endothelium is not doing well, it won't be able to expand and provide the oxygen that's needed to those tissues. So the study found that even mild vitamin C deficiency can impair endothelial function and contribute to the development of cardiovascular disease. So these are all just supporting evidence to the fact that the potential for vitamin C deficiency in affecting your body on a day-to-day -day basis may be higher than we generally think. We think vitamin C, well, it's water-soluble. Yeah, we all need it, but not many people give it too much thought beyond that. So I think it's important if you have ongoing like gum disease, gum issues, and tissue injuries, and specific injuries that are not healing the way you expect them to, or maybe you get injured more often than your peers, this would be something you might consider looking at. 
So along these lines, a case report described a case of subclinical scurvy presented with chronic fatigue, joint pain, and skin changes. The vitamin C levels were found to be very low despite a relatively normal diet, and she was diagnosed with subclinical scurvy. Overall, subclinical scurvy is not really studied much at all compared to clinical scurvy, and there is definitely evidence that suggests that even a mild vitamin C deficiency can have negative impacts on our health, and it's usually something that's going to develop over time. And of course, there's genetic factors that play into this as well that make those people that aren't getting enough more susceptible, and in some cases, those people that aren't getting enough less susceptible. So when it comes to scurvy causes and treatment, I think genetic factors are another thing to look at. And with humans, along with other primates, they're not able to synthesize vitamin C. So there's a mutation called the GULO mutation, and this gene encodes for the enzyme that's essential in the final step in the biosynthesis of vitamin C. So because humans lack that, they have to get all of their vitamin C from the food that we eat. So really the genetics around vitamin C and making one more or less susceptible is about the transport of the vitamin C throughout the tissues, absorption into the body, and the transport into the cells. From my understanding of this topic, there's two main proteins that can be genetically altered that can affect your ability to both absorb the vitamin C and get it into the cell. So there is the SLC23A1 and SLC23A2. The SLC23A1 encodes for the protein known as SVDT1, which is primarily found in the intestines and the liver. And it's the one that's mostly associated with bringing that vitamin C in from your digestive tract into the blood. The SLC23A2 encodes for a different protein, which is found in a, a lot of different tissues, and that's more responsible for transporting the vitamin C throughout the body and into the cells specifically. And there has been some research around this. So the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that a fairly common variant of the SLC23A1 was associated with lower vitamin C levels in the blood. So what is vitamin C actually doing in this case of scurvy, and why is it so important? Well, like most vitamins, they are cofactors in our bodies. Of course, vitamin C is also an antioxidant. But in this case, vitamin C is an essential cofactor in the synthesis of collagen. And collagen provides the strength and elasticity for our tissues, joints, bones, cartilage, etc. During collagen synthesis, two particular amino acids are hydroxylated, and this is where vitamin C comes in. Both proline and lysine are hydroxylated by enzymes known as proleal hydroxylase and lysyl hydroxylase, respectively. And these hydroxylation enzymes are responsible for the proper folding of the collagen. Vitamin C is needed for that hydroxylase enzyme to work and to get the proper folding of the collagen needed for optimal collagen synthesis and structure. If the hydroxylation process is not working, you still may get some collagen synthesis, but just not going to work as well as it otherwise would. So in treating scurvy, obviously the main thing is to get more vitamin C into the body. If you have some of these genetic things going on, then you may need to increase the vitamin C beyond what you would typically would need to intake. Of course, using vitamin C and getting into the body can be a challenge as well because there's limitations in how much you can take in. If you think something like this might be going on with you, you probably want to get a blood sample to see what your serum vitamin C levels are. That can help us understand if you really have a problem with subclinical scurvy or not enough vitamin C. So how did I do? Did that help you better understand the scurvy causes and treatment? Hopefully it does. If you do have follow-up questions on this topic, drop it in the comment section. I'm happy to answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.